Well, we've learned how to insert the primary principle and isometric views. Now we're going to learn how to dress them up. So that could include moving the location to changing the line weights to uh, changing the lines that we see having visible and invisible lines on. So let's go to view first and talk about the display frames. So the feature under the tab view on the bottom <clears throat> has the tab display frames and when I click on that you can see frames around each one of the views. Now what makes this the primary view is if I grab that primary view you gotta grab on the edge you'll notice that the principal views follow the primary view wherever it goes. If I grab this edge over here You'll notice it can go side to side, okay, but I cannot go up and down. It must be truly aligned. Notice that when I go right over the part, it's truly aligned. You see the center line here and the top and bottom lines? That's what makes this a true orthographic view. They line up perfectly over the other view, okay? These lines here that represent the top and bottom of the circle, again, line up. Same with the top view. The top view can only go up and down. It can't go side to side. It must keep all, align, all lines aligned with the primary view. Now, this is my isometric view. If you ever, ever need to, sorry, excuse me, if you ever need to turn on or off hidden lines or crosshairs or whatever, what you want to do is double click the ISO view to make sure you're in the isometric view. Right click on it and go to properties. Under properties, we can go to generation. And you can choose if you want to have hidden lines on or not. So I, I turn that off and I hit apply. This is what it's going to look like. All right. So typically isometric views will not show hidden lines. So that should be turned off. And if I turn off this one here called fillets, wherever the boundary of the fillets are will disappear when I turn that off. I'll hit apply. And that's what your ISO view is supposed to look like. It's not supposed to have any of the fillets on. In fact, none of the views should have any of the fillets on. Rarely do you ever want to show the fillets. So this view has been modified to be dressed up to show the hidden lines and the fillets removed. Okay. Now this line here and this line here actually represent center line of the arcs. Again, if I double click this line here, it makes the proper view active, which in this case, in the specification tree, would be the right view. So the right principal view here is showing these lines and I don't want them. So we go to the right and go to properties. Under properties, we're going to turn off the axis and hit apply. See these lines? Those are the tangent edges of the fillets. I don't want to see the tangent edges of the fillets and that's why the fillets needs to be turned off. Hit apply. Now I can see the hidden lines. All right, the problem is when you have a hole, you're supposed to show a center axis for the hole not for the radiuses but for the holes if i turn the axis back on and hit apply 
what happens is these axes overlap. So what I got to do is click OK to this, click this line, right click and hide it. So I can see just my hidden line. Again, click on this view or that line that's sticking up that axis, right click and hide that. Now this proper, now this view looks proper. It has the axis, the hidden lines representing the hole, the axis representing the center of the hole, and all the other lines on the outside are solid. I'm gonna come over to this view. This view technically looks fine. Let's double click on it to make it active. This is my top, sorry, my front view the top one in the specification tree. I will go to properties again and we will turn off the fillets because the fillet should be on in any of the views. There's no hidden lines so I can turn that off. I'll hit apply. I'll hit OK to move this aside. Okay, Visually you're not going to see much change because the fillets to the curves on the corners are perpendicular to the screen so they're pointing right at us at the ends of the circle so you won't see those. There's no hidden lines because the only thing hidden would be the hole. We're not looking at a view that would represent any hidden lines. What is this and how do you get this in or out? This is a crosshair and I need that to dimension to this uh, circle here. So we're going to go to um, the front view again and go to properties center line apply is what turns that axis on or the center crosshair of the circle so you need that crosshair in there so you need to make sure center line is on if I hit axis and turn it off and hit apply you're not going to see anything because the axis again will be the center of the circle which would be perpendicular to us so that center axis would be pointing right at us. It'd be the very point of the center of the circle. You wouldn't really see that. So that's how this one here should be set up. And then on the top view, again, you see we're seeing these axes that I don't want. And you're seeing filleted edges. So if I double click this top view, and then right click on it and go to properties I would turn off the axis and hit apply so you see the axis went off I would hit fillets and hit apply well what I really need is that axis right down the center so I'm going to go ahead and go to axis and hit apply Unfortunately, it gives me the axis for the radiuses on the corners. So we're going to hit OK. And then the only way to get around that is to make right click on them and hide them. So make them invisible by putting them in the hide mode. That's what your top view should look like. All right, I'm going to double click on this primary view again. Now let's do this one. I'm going to double click this primary view. And I'm going to use the control button and grab all these lines. All those lines represent the outside of the periphery. I'm going to right click on it and go to properties and under the graphics I'm going to change that line weight to be much thicker or at least twice as thick. So currently it's at 2. I'm going to switch that to 4 and hit apply and I'll say OK. I'm going to click off in no man's land. You'll see how this is much bolder. Okay then the hidden lines and the axis 
I was kind of a pain grabbing all of those. Let's try something else. Let's right click on this line. Oh, it doesn't exist. Let's highlight this whole profile. Right click on this and go to properties. Change that line thickness to 6 and hit apply. Say OK. The problem with that is these lines were not supposed to change. Okay, and these lines are supposed to be half of whatever those are or more or less. So we're going to just really exaggerate this so we can see. I'm going to use the control button, right click, and go to properties. Change that line weight back to 2 and hit apply. Say OK. Click off here in no man's land. See how the outside periphery of the part is much more pronounced than the inside parts. You want to reference the first chapter in your print reading book about line types. So periphery lines are the outside part of the part. This center line represents the center of the hole and these hidden lines represent the hole inside that you would not be able to see from the outside. All right, let's try something here. Let's come over here and we'll double click this. And I'm going to right click on this and go to properties. Um, cancel. I'm going to Oops. I'm going to uh, select the right or front view in the specification tree and do a right click properties. I'm going to go to generation and I'm going to turn that center line off. I don't need the pattern on either. There's no pattern. I'll hit OK. I'm going to highlight this whole thing. Right click on it and go to properties. Under graphic, I'll change this line weight back to six, hit apply, say OK. Right click in the spef specification tree again and go to properties. Under generation, turn the center line back on and hit apply. Select OK. So last time what I did was I just highlighted everything, changed it to one thickness, and then came back and changed these back to the thinner line weight. In this case, what I did was I, I hid the center line, highlighted everything, changed the thickness, and then pulled the center line back out of the hide. I'll do that again up here. I will double click this view to make it active. Right click on the top. And we'll go to properties, change the center line, hidden line, axes, pattern, have everything off, and hit apply. Select OK. Highlight everything. Right click on the edge and go to properties. Change the graphics. I'll switch that to 6, hit apply, select OK, right click on the top view in the specification tree and go back to properties, generation and go back to hidden lines and apply that, notice the hidden lines look good. Go back to axis and apply that. The problem is it came back out of hide. So I got to hit OK. So what you want to do first is sit all your line weights and then come back and worry about all your thicknesses and such. Or actually maybe turn everything off and then do your thickness.
I'm going to select this line, right click, and go to properties. No, not properties. I'm going to go to hide. Right click on that line and hide it. Right click on this line and hide it. Now that view is done. All right, notice the line weight's not thick enough for the isometric view. You want to make sure you're in the isometric view, so you double click the edge of the border there. I can highlight everything. Right click on the edge of the part and go to properties. Change the graphics to increase the thickness. I got all the hidden lines off and everything, so it's all going to work out easy this time. I hit apply and say OK. Now you see I got the views, they're much more pronounced. Now, you might want to slide these down a little bit more. Slide this down about here. If I were to go, well, you know, I don't need to be perfect, but I'm going to create a line from about here to here. Everything to the right of that line. under the rev block and above the title block needs to be uh, clear for adding rev notes bullet materials general notes flag notes etc all of this area is reserved for that so therefore our parts can never go past that line Okay, now you don't draw that line in there. I just put that line in there for visual purpose. I deleted it back out. All right, now they're kind of clustered, so you can kind of move a view, move this view over, move this view up. Kind of makes it look a little bit cleaner. All right, so in this demo, we learned how to move the views around and dress up the features to show hidden lines or not show hidden lines where they're needed. Remember, in most views, we always turn the fillets off, at least. The hidden lines are never shown in the isometric view. And you'll always have to have a crosshair wherever there's a circle, except for the isometric view. All right, that concludes this demo. The next demo will be to create dimensions.